All right, so we finally have the AirPods Max. So I've seen a couple of videos on this and I've just been so intrigued by what this is. I, if you follow me on social media, you know I've been a little bit harsh on them, but right now I'm gonna keep an open mindset and I'm gonna review these as if I didn't know the price tag, just assuming it's within the you know realm of normal pricing for ANC over the ear headphones. So I just wanted to put that out there before I did anything else. I'm trying to keep a very open mind here because I think it would be unfair to do otherwise. So let's go ahead and open this up. So in Apple fashion, you know, you've got fantastic packaging. Even the outer box it ships in has pull tabs and just really, really fancy packaging, which is always welcome. You know, you definitely pay that premium. So you, you expect the quality of everything to be exceptional, even the box. So it opens up like this. And there we go, AirPods Max right there in the center. And I'm gonna pull that out and put the box aside. And here we have it. So this is a pretty massive box, like quite big. I think this is bigger than the Mac Minis box that I got, which is crazy to think about. So I got the Space Gray model and it's, um, you know, the box is pretty cool. So on the back, it does have a picture of this smart case or so it's, it's called. Um, it, it looks like a bra, a bikini. I don't even know what it like. It's, it's this weird, odd shape, but it is not really a case. C calling it a cover is more apt in my opinion. So on this side, we've got the uh, sticker to pull it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. And, well, that's a lot of static on it. Just gonna tear it all off. And there we go. So we've got AirPods Max box. Let me lift it up. Boom. All right. So there we have it. I do want to say these have the weirdest smell ever. Like I, I've never really noticed a smell when I unbox Apple products, but this just has some, a really weird chemically smell. I don't know what it is. Um, all right. So let me pull these out of the box. They are really heavy. They feel heavy right off the bot bat. Okay, what's up? What's in the inside? We've got AirPods Max, quick user guide, relevant information, no stickers. All right, not really that shocking. And then a USB-C to lightning cable to charge it up. And I believe you could probably use this to listen to audio on um, computers or uh, iPads that have USB-C. I will test that out in this video. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna put this to the side real quick. Let's look at the AirPod, AirPods Max themselves. So this is the case and, okay, it's covered with a little piece of paper, like a frosted paper for protection. Let me pull that off. So really good protection. And on the back, there's a much harder, I don't know what it is. It's like a piece of plastic that's uh, a little bit more rigid. That's interesting. And here is the AirPods Max themselves. The, the case is, odd like it, it makes no sense it's exposed on the bottom over here it's exposed on the top it really does nothing for protection or carrying honestly this is a you could just you have to carry it with the handle anyways and this does nothing i don't know why they've been bothered this is so soft like i am scared of how soft this is this feels like it could easily tear through um with a couple of months of usage you know we do especially since this isn't covered when you put it in a bag or something, I would be very skeptical of putting these in a bag with anything else because one sharp poke, maybe a pen or something, and I feel like these could get obliterated. Like they are not, like it doesn't feel like it's a very thick layer. It's it's concerning, okay. So the pouch opens up like this. It's like an old cell phone case pouch, if you remember those. And the magnet is okay, it's not the strongest. Like. It, honestly, this, this case just feels like such an afterthought. It does not look that cool. Okay, so this is metal. I love this aluminum. It feel it looks great. And then it's got some decent motion. Not very fluid, but it is not, uh, you know, it does move. It's just not very fluid. I guess this is just because it's brand new. A little bit of that, okay. Let me pull off the ear cups here. So they are actually, these are protective uh, layers. This is not a white ear pad, so when you pull it off, you've got uh, these protective cups, which is nice, a nice touch. Let's put those off to the side. And on the inside, you guys can, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but 
right there it says R, so that indicates the right side, and the side says L. There you go, you guys got a quick glimpse. And on the inside, you guys can see there are sensors right on this side. Um, again, I'm not sure if the camera is going to do the greatest job of picking that up. I hope it does. So right there, there's a sensor. Um, on the inside, there's a sticker. Uh, not sure what that's about. Wonder if it's removable. Yeah, it's removable. All right. So it looks like this could probably be the um, what do you call it? Serial number. And let's see how the ear cups remove. So the ear cups are pretty easy to remove. And on the inside right here, they uh, you guys can see what they look like. Pretty interesting design. A lot of vents for the speakers, holes there. Uh, there's that sensor right there, a little bit clearly you guys can see. Um, it says R right there, and then there's four screws. Looks pretty, pretty good. And then this is what the cup looks like when it's outside. Pretty nice. So this does feel really good. And it does go back in, so it's not gonna come out like I'm trying to pull it out and uh, it's not really coming out. You do have to apply a decent amount of force to get it. Like you need to willingly be wanting to take it out for it to come out. My only concern is I hope that these magnets don't get weak over time. Okay, let's look at the uh, cup, what else you get. So there are little cutouts right here for, I believe the microphones right here as well. A bunch of them throughout the device. Uh, lightning port right there. So this does have U uh, lightning, not USB-C as almost every other a uh, pair of ANC headphones does right now. Uh, more cutouts, and that's about it on the bottom. On the top, right with the lightning port, you have the digital crown. I don't know if it's called the digital crown on this, but this is the digital crown right out of the uh, Apple Watch. I wonder if this gives you the same type of feedback that you get off of the Apple Watch. Hang on, let me grab my Apple Watch and take it off, and let's put them side by side and see if they're the same exact size. Two. So, no, so it's not exactly like, like right out lifted from the Apple Watch. This is way bigger. So it, it's the same concept, but it's not just directly ripping from the uh, AirPod, the uh, Apple Watch. Uh, and then this button also looks very similar to the design of the Apple Watch with the button over here. Again, this is much bigger and this has actually, it doesn't sit flush like it does on the Apple Watch. So interesting design choice there. And moving right along, let's look at this uh, hinge, which is a, uh, this is actually a stainless steel stem. And if you can, you can just pull it out. And there's not a huge amount of movement there. I expected more, but that's about it. That's, you get, I think like an inch, inch and a half, not much um, on both sides. It is significantly, like it is tight. This is not a, uh, it won't move. So even if, it, even though it doesn't have clicks, uh, that doesn't mean it's just going to move around. So that's, that's weird. Okay. Let's, let's see how stretchy they are. So they are really good with that. It does really move around well. Um, and these do feel good. You know, I can't lie. The, the metal feels great in hand. This gives you that uh, build quality feel, but, uh, the, the cloth on the inside and up here, I'm not sure. Like this is definitely weird. I'm so used to these having leather that, uh, it feels a little bit weird to have this. So let's go ahead and set this up and see what the setup process is like on the iPhone. Let's see if any lights come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a light at the bottom right here. Flashing right there. Okay, we got this AirPods Max uh, thing on the iPhone. So let me go ahead and hit that. There we go, nice animation. Noise control, press the noise no, cancellation switch between noise cancellation and transparency. So this button is for uh, noise cancellation and transparency mode, switching between the two. Skip, announce messages. No, don't announce messages. Why would I want to do that? See in here, okay, cool. I want to see how this works. Okay, so I tried out this uh, spatial audio feature and so far, all I could feel like is there was more separation of the audio, more instruments, like I could hear more things clearly, but I tried to move my head around a lot and I didn't notice anything much. So I will turn it on for supported videos and try to figure this out later, but uh, let me set this up. So 77% charge, cool, all right, done. And that's it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here real quick is uh, give these a listen, see what they're like, and come back to you guys with my initial impressions of these. All right, so I just spent the last hour or so testing these out and just seeing what the crap these are all about. And I will not mention the price here. So let me just talk about what I felt about these as active noise canceling headphones. So the headphones themselves, they feel very heavy. 
Um, the materials are definitely, um, this aluminum, the stainless steel here, they feel premium, but the issue I did notice was that this top here, the, this cloth didn't feel that good. And I, I only spent, as I said, an hour wearing them. So I don't know the true comfort of this, but I did start to feel just the tiniest bit uh, uncomfortable with the pads. They, they felt a little bit itchy. Now this could just be complete placebo or something I'm not aware of at all, but there might be something to say about these being not the most comfortable material to have around your ears. Now, that being said, I will say that the sound quality was very flat. It was not, they didn't, I didn't have any high bass. I didn't have any, anything that was crazy um, out of the ordinary. Now, personally, I like my active noise canceling earphones to have a little bit of bass to them. Um, it's one of the reasons why I actually prefer the Sony's over the Bose because they were um, a little bit more bass heavy. My music that I listen to, it's a little bit more bass heavy. I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, electronic music, pop music that tends to have more bass. And this just doesn't seem to hit that, right? Like I, I, I didn't, the way I enjoy my music didn't feel like the way these headphones were designed for. Audio quality wise, noise cancellation wise, I was, you know, I was, I was pretty impressed with the noise cancellation. They're on par, really. I couldn't find anything to complain about. But I will say that the transparency mode on this is fantastic. It doesn't feel like you're wearing headphones when you talk to someone through them. They just clearly, the audio is crystal clear. And I, the, these nine microphones definitely help, I feel like. Even though only three of them are what meant for voice pickup, I think that the uh, other others working together to cut out the ambient noise or to work with that transparency mode is just doing a great job. Because whenever I do try the uh, kind of transport and ambient mode on the Sony XM4s, they do feel like you're talking through something. It doesn't feel like it's a direct conversation, but with these, that definitely feels way better. Then moving on this crown, it is, uh, it definitely is very free flowing. Uh, it flows well and it doesn't have any uh, issues. Out of the box, they are set as to, you have to push them backwards to get more volume and up front to get less volume. That, that was a little bit confusing, but I did find that you could change that in the settings, which I will discuss the settings menu later. Uh, and then this button as well, it's, this button has no other function besides changing between uh, transparency and noise cancellation mode. And you can potentially include the off mode as well, which is the third one, so it doesn't eat up any battery just uh, audio directly, but I really don't know why they didn't include maybe something else. Like if you hold, long press it, have some other mode or something. I, I feel like this is a little bit of a waste. Then there's the uh, digital crown, which has a pretty tactile feel to it. If you do press it once, it's play, pause, twice, you know, forward, three times, it goes back, so on and so forth. And if you hold it down, long press, that gets you Siri. So moving on, I, I wanna talk about this case. The material used here is very similar to the ones that is available uh, not available, the ones that is used on the iPad Pro cases. So the leather case, um, sorry, not the leather case, the keyboard cases have a very similar material to this. And from my experience, these age horribly. And just from the couple of minutes that they've been sitting around my desk, they already have started attracting dust and lint. And I don't think these will age well. They just will not. And not to mention, no, this just has no protection whatsoever for my headphones. Like this doesn't, cover anything. If I put it in a bag, it's not going to do anything. Like I don't know why Apple didn't provide a more protective case for these. It just doesn't make sense whatsoever. If it's a separate accessory, I mean, I guess that would be something that I would have to get because otherwise it would be just, I would, I cannot put these in a bag with this case alone. It would be just too risky because of all the cloth material used on this. So moving on, let's talk about these adjustable ears, the stems. The material on this is just fantastic. They, they are extremely high quality and the joint over here is very high quality too. So not only can you move the headphones like this, you can actually move it like that. So you guys can see like it moves that way and not many headphones do that. And this actually works really well to give you a more perfect fit on your ear. So that's something that is very nice. I do wish more uh, manufacturers would have that. More brands would have this movement on their headphones as well. What happens is on other headphones, you just have to have the entire stem kind of move. But on this, the the, the kind of, uh, what, what, what do you call this piece? The handle, the, the stem, whatever it is, this piece will move completely. But here, this cup can move individually from it. So that's a very cool implementation 
for comfort. But it's hard to run away from the fact about how heavy these are. They are, you feel them, you definitely feel them, and there's no running away from them. You just can't hide uh, this much weight. It's almost, I believe, 100 grams more than the Sony XM4s, which is unfortunate. But uh, the build quality of the materials here is definitely a big reason for that and I think that if this wasn't something you wore on your head it would be okay but since this is something you wear on your head and it's on your ears it the weight does play a little bit of factor towards uh your convenience and comfort which I you know I haven't tested these long enough yet but I do doubt that this might be an issue and moving on let me show you guys the menu here the settings menu that you get here so uh, I'm going to throw this up on the screen as well. What you have here is uh, when you go into the settings for these, you have the noise cancellation mode, you have the transparency mode, and you have off, which you can set through here, or you can set through quick toggles or over here. Now, since they are on my head, they won't let me do that. Now, you can also choose what the button cycles between. So right now, there's only noise cancellation and transparency mode checked. If you add off as well, it will uh, cycle through that. But honestly, I don't think that's necessary. So I don't have that enabled. Then the digital crown being front to back. So this is what I said for volume control. Initially, when I was using it, you had to push it back to get more volume and push it towards the front to get less volume. Very confusing. I switched it and now that issue is solved. You can adjust which way you want the volume to work depending on your preferences. That's fantastic. I was worried that this was something they would just glance over, but I'm glad they didn't. Then there's automatic head detection as well. So immediately when you put it on, it will play, pause the music or uh, stop it. But this, you can't turn it off in case you don't want your music to stop if you slightly move your headphones off for a second or whatever. I personally think that's a great feature and I'm gonna leave it on. Connect to this iPhone. So you can choose if you want things to connect automatically or just connect when you were last connected. So if you have other devices, so if you constantly use this with your computer and you don't want this automatically connecting to your iPhone every time, you can have that turned off. I also had a chance to try out spatial audio. Now what spatial audio did was the initial test this has didn't really give me much. What I did was I watched an episode of Ted Lasso from Apple TV Plus, and that gave me a much better idea of what it was doing. So what it's trying to do is when you're watching something, it'll try to pull the audio and make it feel like it's coming from dead in front of you. When you move your head, say you're watching here sitting, and this is your left, uh, right side and your left ear. When you move towards the right, the left, I'm sorry, when you move your head towards the left, the audio will start playing more towards the right uh, right ear. And then when you move towards this way, towards the right, it'll start playing towards the left. So it sounds like the audio is coming from the center. It won't really do much beyond that from what I observed. I tried moving up, down, stuff like that. Really not much of a difference. I didn't really think it was that necessary. And it, does, it wasn't 100% accurate. I noticed when I had my head like completely facing 90 degrees, on the right and when I came back to the center, it still kept audio towards the right. The, the accelerometer and gyroscope aren't perfect yet. It doesn't really do the best job from what I experienced. I, I prefer just having the stereo audio. They really didn't um, feel, I, I don't feel like spatial audio is doing more than um, it really, it just feels like a gimmick to be honest. Then finally on the menu, you have uh, model name, model number, serial number, and the version. Uh, that's about it on the settings menu. I also will play a audio clip for you guys just to show you what the mic quality sounds like directly. So have a listen to that and you can be a judge for yourself as to what the microphone sounds like when you're talking into it. All right guys, this is a audio clip right from the AirPods Max. What you were listening to before was a Zoom H1 recorder with a lavalier mic attached to it. Now this is a lot more of a generic audio setup. Uh, this is what you will hear during most calls. If you take this, this is what the opposite person will hear. So let me know what you guys think the quality is. This is a very silent room, not much going on, not a lot of ambient noise. So uh, this is probably some of the best conditions you'll get mic wise. So let me know what you think of the quality. So now that you guys have heard what the microphone sounds like, here's one more thing I was concerned or kind of just curious about. Can you listen to these through the provided U lightning to USB-C cable if you hook it up to a USB-C without having to connect through Bluetooth? And unfortunately, at least with my iPad, that does not seem to be the case. So these are charging up. I can see that the iPad is charging my AirPods Max up, but they will not play audio if I have the Bluetooth turned off. If I have it turned off and I try to connect to play through these, it'll automatically turn my Bluetooth on and it's not letting me play a wired connection. So if you wanna to listen to these wired, you're gonna to have to get the 
USB, um, the USB, the Lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to a USB C if you want to listen to it on the iPad Pro, or a uh, Lightning, uh, the 3.5 millimeter to Lightning if you want to listen to it on the iPhones, which is just crazy and absurd. It really makes no sense, and I just, you know. Apple has this thing for making things be harder than they are and connectivity on their wireless devices is one of the biggest ones I've noticed. Just why do you want to make it so hard? Why just why not let me listen through a wire or at least include a damn wire in the box? This is just atrocious. So let me wrap things up here and I want to start off by talking about the build and just the design and everything. The design still hasn't grown on me. I think it looks pretty ugly. I really don't know what the design is going to strive for, but I do know this will kind of become its own identity and there will be a bunch of knockoffs of this. The build materials are fantastic. The stainless steel here, the, the, the space gray finish, it just looks awesome. I'm not gonna lie about that, that looks great. But this uh, mesh up here, this uh, cloth cup over here, it's not gonna age well. And as I said, you know, I have noticed that this can, this is starting to become a little bit itchy and uncomfortable, which may not be an issue, but may be an issue. I really don't know yet. I haven't had enough time to test that out. The audio quality on these, again, it's very neutral. No real standout points with audio. I was actually hoping they'd have a little bit more bass. As I said before, I enjoy my music a little bit bass heavy, and this didn't really uh, hit that mark, especially when I compare it to other uh, headphones that I've listened to, even just from Apple recently, this definitely feels very low on the bass side of things compared to just everything else. Especially thinking about these, I don't know why Apple has decided to go for such a flat EQ. I also tried changing things up with the phone's EQ, going into a bass boost mode through the equalizers and the settings, but really I think this has its own equalizer, so it's not letting it do, do anything big. Like I can hear a little bit of difference, but that bass just isn't coming through. These, uh, I don't know if this is just the design or if it doesn't have the chops to pull off the bass. I really don't know. The reality I'm looking at right here is, even if these are worth $300, not the $550 that they charge, what are they providing right here? They don't have the same battery life as the Sony XM4. They're definitely lacking on features that I'll talk about in a further video when I compare these to different headphones. They're lacking with just the sound being anything prolific. The case is abysmal. The reality is, from where I'm sitting, I cannot, even if these cost $300, See why I would get this over the Sony XM4 or the Bose 700. I just, I don't know. The, the reality just seems to kind of disillusion me. Where I tried to come into this with an open mindset, and I think I did a pretty good job here. I didn't really think about the price too much while I was listening to them, but when at the end of this period, what is this providing me comparatively? Like, is there, the only significant thing is that they have the luxury allure to them. They don't really have anything luxurious about them. The unboxing isn't anything that special. The the case and the accessories are minimal. So wh what are you getting out of this deal? And I really don't know. I, I don't have an answer for that. Hopefully I do in a future review of this, but for the time being, my review is that these are okay, but for $550, you can do a lot better. And that's where I'm gonna leave it at with this one, guys. If you have any questions, about these, feel free to ask me down in the comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on social media. I'll have all the handles right here on the screen and of course down in the comments as well. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more AirPods Max content. There is a 100% a XM4 comparison in the pipeline. That's one I'm very interested to make. So be sure to check out the channel for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.